Hey guys, Mr. Zigner again. We're going to be looking at graphing a system of linear equations to find where these two lines cross. Let's get started. So as you can see with our first equation, let's use orange to match that color. The equation's already in y equals mx plus b format. We call that slope intercept format. Now, the number at the end here, this minus seven, if we add a line, and change a sign, we can see that this seven is actually a negative seven. So this is our y-intercept of this equation. What I mean by y-intercept is that the line actually crosses the y-axis at negative seven. Let's see here, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. So right here, that's where it crosses. Now, the next thing we need to deal with is the slope. So there's no number in front of my x, and that's where the slope goes. So if there's no number, we call that a coefficient in front of my x, you can actually kind of imagine there's a one there. Now, what I tell my students is, if ever this number is not a fraction, we wanna turn it into a fraction. Well, how do you turn one into a fraction? by putting it over another one. There we go. So one over one, what does that mean for slope? Well, what it means is that we need to go up one and then right one. Where from? From the y-intercept. So from this negative seven, we're going to go up one and right one. So here we go, up one, right one. Put another point could keep doing this if I wanted to, up one, right one, up one, right one, and so forth. But that's enough for me to get an idea of where my first line goes. So let's come back and you can see I've already made a line. Let me bring that over, get it lined up nicely. And yeah, that's pretty good. So there's our first line for this first equation, y equals x minus seven. All right, switch colors, let's try the other one. This equation, y equals negative 4x plus 3, let's follow the same procedure to create its line. First, we find our y-intercept. Now it says plus 3. That means we have a positive 3 b value in y equals mx plus b. The b value, again, is the y-intercept. So we come to 3 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3. There we go. So there's our y-intercept of 3. Now we look over here, our slope is negative four. If you recall from the last one, as I tell my students, whenever this number is not a fraction, turn it into a fraction. Again, how do you turn an integer into a fraction? Well, just put it over one. The nice thing about that is it tells you that in this case, since it's negative four, we need to go down four and then to the right one. Where from? from this y-intercept. So here we go, come over here to our y-intercept, carefully count down four, one, two, three, four, and to the right one. Once we come down four and right one, we place our new point. You could keep going, I made three points last time, let's do another one. So again, we come down four, one, two, three, four, and right one. Oh, how about that? I actually found where the two lines intersect. But first, let's bring in our line and line that up with my points that I plotted. There we go. Last step is to figure out what ordered pair does it appear that they're crossing at. It's right here where the two lines, the two graph lines seem to cross. Now, what ordered pair is that? Well, we always read our x number first, so this point appears to be two to the right, so that's positive two, and then we go down one, two, three, four, five. So that would be negative five. Well, let's see if I got that right. Yep, two negative five, and that's how we find our first point. One really good idea, I'm just gonna clear all this, is to take that ordered pair and make sure it works in both equations. So here we go. This is my x, this is my y. Two minus seven, yep, that's negative five. 
right here, negative four times two is negative eight, and negative eight plus three, yes again, that's negative five. Perfect, this ordered pair does work in both equations. How about we try one more? Okay, so we have my blue one here, y equals negative x minus four, or you could say opposite of x minus four. And our second one in red here is y equals three-fifths x plus four. Okay, here we go. All right, first we find our y-intercept. Even if I add a line and change the sign, we can see that's a negative four. So I come to my y-axis and I plot my negative four. One, two, three, four. There's negative four on the y-axis. Now I have a negative sign in front of my x this time for slope. You can put a one right here. That kind of lets you know that this is actually a negative one for slope. Let's turn that into a fraction. Negative one over one. Negative numbers mean we're going to move downward. The one on the bottom is moving to the right. Rise over run. Okay, so let's go down one and then over to the right one from our y-intercept. So down one, right one, down one, right one, and we could just keep going, but that's probably enough. Let me bring in my line that I made ahead of time. And perfect. Well, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, moving to my other one. Now we have a y-intercept of positive four because this says plus four. So we come to the y-axis, one, two, three, four. There's my first point on the y-axis. Now I, oh, I do have a fraction this time, three-fifths. Okay, when the top number is positive here, like this three is, that means we're going to go up three, and then again, the denominator is always to the right. So we have my rise over run my change in y over change in x. So from my point here, I want to count carefully up three. One, two, three. Let me double check that. One, two, three. Yep. And to the right, five. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So I've got a couple points. Let's get my line on top of that. Line it up carefully. That looks pretty good. All right. Next is to figure out where it looks like they're crossing. Well, here we go. The two lines seem to intersect right here. Now, what ordered pair is that? Can you figure it out before I get it? So it looks like I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five to the left. So that would be negative five. And we go up one. Negative five, one. Let's see if that's the correct solution to my system of equations. Yeah, there we go. Negative five, one. Now, once again, good idea to just check that answer in both equations to make sure it does work. That way we know we graphed our lines correctly. So negative five, you know, I might write this one. So negative five, so negative, negative five. Well, that would just turn into regular old positive five. Erase that. Minus four, 5 minus 4, yep, is 1. Perfect. It works in the first equation. Second one, okay, we have 3 fifths of negative 5 plus 4. Well, 3 fifths of uh, negative 5 would be, well, I can put this over 1. 3 times 5 is 15, but it's a negative times a positive, so that would be negative 15. 5 times 1 on the bottom is 5. Okay, so negative 15 divided by 5 would be negative 3. Okay, so it, the problem turns into negative 3 plus 4, and negative 3 plus 4, yes, is 1. So again, this negative 5, 1 ordered pair does check out in both of my equations. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, thanks for checking in with me, and Hope that was able to help you improve your skills with graphing systems of linear equations. All right, take care. Thanks a lot.